Hey everyone, Micah Khan with Movie Maker Magazine. Today I got a chance to talk to Denis Villeneuve on his movie Dune. We talked about the craft of filmmaking and the cinematic language behind Dune and what he's learned as a filmmaker throughout his career. I hope you enjoy. Here we go. Congrats on your Oscar nominations. Are you excited? You. Yes, yes, yes. It was a beautiful yeah. film. Yeah, yeah, I was not. Frankly, uh, uh, if you had told me that uh, 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 a few months ago that we will be in the uh, Oscar race, that uh, we will have uh, that kind of recognition, I will have not believe you. I mean, it's like it's like it's really uh, uh, moving. Yeah. yeah, I'm so bummed to see that you are nominated for best director, though. You know, as a fan, <laughs> it's, uh, you're, you're thank you, but uh, you know, it's like uh, those things are. How can I say that? Uh, um, if you are nominated, it's a beautiful thing. If you are not, uh, it, it's not. Um, uh, I, I don't. I don't. I don't take things for granted. You know? Yeah. It's like, uh, uh, and I was pleased, uh, deeply uh, pleased, but uh, with what we got. Yeah. Yeah. So, Denis, I got four questions for you today. Um, I'm a filmmaker myself, and a lot of my questions are going to be a lot about the craft, and I'm super curious about your process in making this film. So, my first question for you is. What was the first step in creating the camera language for Dune? The, the thing is that uh, it all started with the very the, the, the starting point that I wanted the movie to be uh, uh, as visceral and intimate as possible. I want the movie to be visceral, like uh, uh, when I read the book at 13 years old, you know, I identify with Paul Atreides. There's a lot of characters in the book, but I, I really identify with the journey of that, of that boy. And uh, so I decided uh, at first that, that the camera would be just above his shoulder, that the movie scene would be seen from his perspective, that, and that we will discover the world, and what we will learn about the, this world will always be seen mostly through his eyes. My goal was, uh, my, my dream was to be exclusively with him, but it was not possible for storytelling, so I had to go outside. But So the language uh, uh, was a, a immersive language, meaning that uh, uh, the more we will uh, get out of his comfort zone, the more the camera will be free and will open and will uh, embrace the world according to his perspective. Then there was this idea that the world that he was discovering was too big uh, for him to grasp at, at one glance. So I, uh, I always try to frame things in a way that uh, the camera is not, uh, uh, that doesn't have the proper distance to embrace the whole reality. You have to pan, you have to, to, to try to find out that the, because the objects are too, far way too big, the reality is far way too much powerful to be embraced at one glance. And uh, uh, I tried to uh, create a language that is uh, uh, inspiring himself and, uh, from human faces and landscape to always be in relationship with the impact of the landscape on, on my character. And uh, because this movie at the end of the day is a journey of a boy that goes at the deeper he goes into the desert, the deeper he goes, the, he, the movie becomes introspective and he, 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 this new landscape and from that landscape, this new culture that he will meet will transform himself. So I really tried with the cinema, the cinema to create that sensation of following a character that immerses himself and goes deeper and deeper into a landscape. So always being in contact with the re his reactions, intimacy, and massive scope. No real intermediates. Yeah, I noticed now wait, when, uh, when Paul first gets to Arrakis, you do that shot, oh, you do the shots of the crowd when they're yelling the, that he's the voice from the other world. And you do that from a distance too. So it's, it's not just like in the environment, it's from his, uh, his, inner this 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 mythology storyline too that they're trying to make him this messiah yes and, uh, and it's yeah it's it's important because uh, it's uh, something that uh, needs to be seen from his point of view because he's reluctant he doesn't agree with this idea is is for him it's something that's an idea that has been it's a colonizer idea mm. he doesn't want to embrace that he's, he doesn't believe in that and i, I wanted him to feel the strangeness of that situation where he doesn't know, he's unsure himself of what is happening and his mother will explain him later and when they got in a more intimate environment and, uh, and he will be uh, uh, not shocked, but like uh, uh, he will be abrasive to this idea, definitely. Yeah, you do the same thing with um, like any kind of Benny Gesserit idea. 
I remember there's a there's a shot that I really loved. It's such a small thing too. When, when they're having breakfast in the morning and she asked him to use the voice, you do this shot where you kind of go outside and like a little bit more medium. And then when he actually uses the voice, you go into the close up because it's like it, it, that feeling of like the Benny Jesuit way is kind of uncomfortable for him too. I really like those little touches. The, the, the book is a very internal book. It's a book mm -hmm. that is constructed with uh, the, the you, you are following, you have access to the thoughts of the characters. And the idea here was to try to translate uh, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, approach without having to hear their inner process. It's what I was really trying to, with the actors acting, if I can say, <laughs> was trying to, to make sure that the audience will understand how each character goes into uh, and, and, and feel their strategies and their paranoia in each scene. Yeah, that's a good transition to my next question is, is there a major difference in directing actors in something like this epic genre style movie uh, versus like a more grounded movie like Prisoners or uh, even Arrival, you know, is a little bit more like on earth. Like, how do you get your actors to be where you need them to be? Frankly, I will say is the same thing. The difference is, is pre-production where you have to construct something around them. You have to, to build something around them. You have to create a world. But once we are, I'm on set, it's, it's technically the same process because at the end of the day, what would be interesting is the, the, the way as human being, we react to, to events or our or, or goal to evolve as human beings. So it's, it's, they are human, so it's the same. Uh, the, the, the challenge will be to make sure that in all the madness of that uh, world building, there's a bubble of eye concentration around the camera and that uh, that bubble is respected and protected. And uh, the, so the big difference between the indie movie and a, a big, big Hollywood movie is the time it takes from your car to the camera. <laughs> <laughs> when you're in the movies, like a few meters, but when, when you are like a Hollywood movie, you have to cross, uh, you have to focus because you're going to cross many, 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 many people. And many, many. But once you are uh, around the camera, it's the same. Yeah. How do you feel your style has changed since, let's say, like Prisoners to Arrival to Blade Runner and like Dune? Is there anything that you've learned from each of those projects that you've brought into the next? Definitely. I mean, it's like each movie is a learning experience and that's a beauty. You learn as an artist, as a filmmaker, you learn as a human being as well. You, you, you are, uh, the bigger the challenges, bigger are the, 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 you, the movie is like a wild horse that tries to push, push you out of his back and, and, and you will learn things about your ego, about yourself, about your skills, about the, and, and you will be pushed to your limits in order to be able to control the horse. I mean, it's like, uh, the, 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 I'm, riding horses that are more and more powerful. So it's like, yeah, I'm learning tons of things, tons of, in each project. And that's the thing that is the day that I will stop learning, maybe I will stop making movies. It's mm -hmm. like, that's the joy is that I always feel that there's space for improvement. And, mm -hmm. and, and that's the truth. Yeah, from your last movie, uh, Blade Runner, it, what, was the, what was the difference you say, you would think, um, the biggest difference between the camera language between that and Dune? I think that uh, uh, the big difference is that uh, with Roger, uh, we went back to uh, a language that uh, was familiar to us in a way that it was more monolithic and, 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 and simple, um, uh, uh, more pure language, probably. Uh, with uh, uh, Dune, Dune I, there's like a, the idea that the language will evolve as the, the movie moves forward. I mean, it's like uh, there, the, this is the idea that the, the movie start like when the world is uh, stable and, and that the, the, the uh, things are for Paul are, are, are all grounded. The language is very grounded, very traditional. And the more the movie evolves, the more Paul is in contact with, uh, uh, with uh, that call for the freedom from the desert, the more the camera becomes an L and the more the movie becomes free and there's like the language uh, in a way become more deconstructed in the, in the, as, as uh, uh, the movie evolves. So uh, that's the big difference, I think. You make some really great choices in your shots that I feel that really amplify like the cinematic storytelling of the movie. Like uh, for example, when like Paul is facing the Gam Jabbar, right? Uh, you juxtapose him with like Lady Jessica 
and they're almost in like the very same frame mm. and as jessica is like dealing with her fear like and, and and working through it the same way that paul is working through it you frame them almost exactly the same and i was wondering um how much is that is something that you've pre-planned by yourself or collaborated with your dp and editor or is that something you just find on set no, it's something that I plan uh, uh, along with my storyboard artist when I I, I come with a, I like for scenes like that specifically, it's something that was uh, uh, storyboarded because it's like uh, in the screenplay, by the way, it was in the screenplay as well. Uh, I have to, to say it's important. It, it's like uh, it, it has been written that way. The idea mm -hmm. that, uh, that we will feel the education, Paul's education, and we will feel the link with the mother and the and and, and the, the I, w I wanted to juxtapose the inner turmoil of Lady Jessica having to deal with the pressure of being an but at the same time having all the humanity of a mother and having that clash be seen on screen as Paul has experienced that pain and 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 to by doing so creating that link that we feel that Paul has been through all this education himself and, and, the, and the bond between them. And it's something that uh, I uh, uh, we wrote the scene this way. And then I storyboarded the scene this way and we shot it this way. I noticed also there's a lot of uh, juxtaposition between the shots in um, Caledon and, and Arrakis too, where you kind of, I, lo I love the way you, um, like the very first image of Paul where it's like raining and you kind of feel like there's like the shot of like rain kind of like going over mm -hmm. him and like the big importance of moisture on mm -hmm. water in this movie is like is something that I think was done so well and I was wondering like how much of that like how much of like how much like, how like I know the book is like a really like big like every chance it gets is like we need water you know like or sacrificing your water but I was wondering, like, you know, the way you introduce, there's a shot in Caledon where the very first sound you hear is like, um, is, is Zendaya's character saying that my planet is most beautiful when the sun is low. And right before they leave for Caledon, you do a very similar shot where Caledon, we see the sun very low and he's putting his hand in the water. And I remember that. And I was, I was wondering, like, do you plan those kinds of juxtapositions too? Like, or do you just kind of like play around with the actors? No, no, no. It's it's uh, there's something that uh, uh, when you do a, a movie like that, in, in the as you write the screenplay, there's like uh, you are trying to create a, a, a melody. You're trying to create a, a, a inner currents that uh, uh, will be meaningful or at least will have an impact on the audience mind or in its in the, in the audience perception. In order to you have what the movie is saying at the surface and you're trying to build layers that uh, people will perceive, not necessarily intellectually, but will uh, subliminally. Uh, subliminal. Feel it, yeah, essentially yeah. on, on one yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and they are like, uh, um, I'm trying as much as possible to, to plan these things in advance. And uh, so they have the proper uh, uh, power. I mean, it's like, uh, uh, like the idea of uh, having uh, the presence of water in almost every shot in one way or the other it's, it's like rain the shadows of raindrop on an actor's face or having moistures in the air or clouds or or the ocean of course or say, there's something that it's, there was a it, it's, it came from a re visual research and, and, and thinking about how can we uh, uh, in a subliminal way and trying in a more elegant poetical way out bring uh, a clash uh, between the uh, ecosystem of both planets ecosystems the biology is at the heart of, 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 of the book and i wanted to make sure that we would be as close to the spirits as possible yeah and you did you you fucking killed it man i loved it uh <laughs> so my last question to you man yeah i i, I mean, i'm obsessed i'm a big lawrence of arabia fan and it's, i haven't been like this excited about a move like like a desert movie i guess <laughs> but like it, it really made me feel like i was watching lawrence arabia for the first time again Wow, um, that's, so that that's was because yeah. it's, one of, it's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, it's yeah. one of my favorite movies. I, on my birthday one year, I asked all my friends to come see it with me. I had a movie theater put it up. Nobody showed up but me because <laughs> it was uh, a four hour version. <laughs> yeah, I, I had a similar experience when I, I was, I don't know how old you are, but I, I think I was about 19 years old or 18 years old. And I, I, I show up to the uh, projection of Lorenzo Arabia, a new 70 millimeter print. 
in Montreal. And I was alone in the theater. I was alone. And, yeah. and I remember I was a film student at that time, at the beginning, and, and it changed my life. <laughs> it's yeah, like, yeah. I was yeah. like, it, it's a master class into filmmaking. And yeah. still, it is one of my, by far, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, I just, I, and people who complain about the length really make me angry because it's like, by the time you're done with that movie, you feel like Lawrence does. Like, you're just like, I don't want to be in the desert anymore. Like, <laughs> like, I'm tired. Like that last shot of him leaving, I've always loved. What advice do you have to filmmakers out there who are trying to get to this level of filmmaking? Like, do you have, is there anything you learned through your filmmaking that you would give, um, you know, any movie maker out there, like you should try this. But honestly, something that really uh, uh, helped me tremendously when I was a young filmmaker, I was out of film school, and I had a chance at the time to uh, uh, do. I was hired to do several small documentaries, five minutes documentaries, done with a single camera, um, alone around the world. So I spent a year shooting tiny documentaries and uh, uh, that changed my life that the idea to be alone with a camera trying to embrace reality in a way that would be cinematic to develop uh, uh, intimate relationship with the camera uh, meaning that uh, it becomes an, ex an extension of yourself and that uh, you you are like trying to figure out when something happened uh, when the cow is walking in the field and it will happen one time and the sun is going down and where do I put my camera? So it means something. So it becomes a, a cinematic image that has a, a meaning and that means something else than just a cow walking on the field at the end of the day it, and, and, and that to create poetry. So it's, it's like that uh, I will encourage if you are a young filmmaker, to, even with your iPhone, but to go out and be in contact with life and shoot life. Thank you so much for listening to this Movie Maker interview with Denis Villeneuve. I hope that the next time you go out and make your movie, that you really take in what it means to film life. As always, if you enjoyed this conversation, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.